Now, going back to our top story this morning, history was made yesterday as former President Donald Trump was arraigned in New York on 34 felony counts, all relating to fraud and falsifying business records, all of which he pled not guilty to. This morning, we're live with Scripps political correspondent Joe St. George to help us break that all down. Joe, as always, we appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, what would you say are some of the key takeaways from yesterday's historic arraignment? Yeah, hey, good, good morning, Matt. You know, we had imagery, which was a key takeaway, I think. And you also had the indictment and the statement of facts, which was a, a key takeaway uh, as well. Let's start with the indictment. The statement of facts is really where m much of the meat is. Uh, District Attorney Alvin Bragg describing a catch and kill scheme. You're going to want to familiarize yourself with that phrase. That'll come up uh, as this case presumably makes its way towards trial. It's essentially about uh, an allegation that Mr. Trump um, attempted to suppress negative press. And that isn't a crime in this country. Every politician tries to keep bad stories about them from coming out. But the allegation in the statement of facts, in, in the statement of facts, through witness testimony, through audio recordings, Mr. Bragg is presenting the case that Mr. Trump falsified business records to cover up the payments that hushed the stories, that quieted the stories, involving, yes, an adult film actress, allegedly, but also individuals like a former doorman as well. That's how we ultimately get to 34 felony counts. This involves more about ledgers, though, business transactions, Matt, as opposed to uh, affairs. That's important to know. This is very much a white collar business transaction story. And then finally, just real quickly on the imagery, what a moment. A former president stoically walking into a courtroom, sitting at a table in a room where he's not in control. The judge is in control of courtrooms. That was a that was a moment for the history books, regardless of whether or not at the end of this thing, Mr. Mr. Trump is found not guilty or not. Yeah, you're right, Joe, and truly historic, like you've been saying, uh, something obviously we've never seen before. Now, anyone who has paid any amount of attention to current events over the last few years knows that, of course, former president isn't one to hide what he might be thinking or feeling. And in the case of his arraignment, he's been constantly yeah. blasting the entire process, sharply criticizing the entire system and, as always, denying any wrongdoing. So, Joe, whether it's in his social media posts or various speeches, do you expect the former president to possibly calm down his explicit criticism from here on out, given what's at stake? There's no indication that he is. Uh, his speech last night from Mar-a-Lago, pretty typical uh, Trump criticizing the prosecutions. He's out on social media this morning saying that Republicans in Congress should defund the Department uh, of Justice. Now, I think what you're getting at from a from a from a question standpoint, Matt, is the fact that yesterday's hearing wasn't live streamed, but we have the we have reporter we had reporters in the room. Uh, there was a court reporter, a transcription of the hearing, and the judge has essentially warned Mr. Trump's legal team that his their client needs to be careful on social media that he doesn't want inciting of violence. So, the judge in this case is paying is paying close attention. Uh, to, to his social media posts, and that perhaps could create problems for him down the line. Now, we, we need to kind of bring it all into context as to what happens next. Matt, we're not scheduled to have another hearing in this case until early December. That potentially sets up a trial in January of 24, just a few weeks before the Iowa caucuses. That could limit former President Trump's ability uh, to campaign. And one final note, when you speak to legal experts about this indictment, I'm hearing this word a lot. Novel, novel. Mr. Bragg's indictment is novel. Not a whole lot of legal precedent here. Uh, it's bit kind of, bit kind of, uh, you know, convoluted, unclear. It's not open and shut case. It's very possible that Mr. Trump's able to defeat these charges in the end. Gosh, and we are just in April, so we've got a long way to go. Well, joining us this morning has been political correspondent Joe St. George breaking down yesterday's historic indictment of former President Trump for us. Uh, as always, thanks for the insight, Joe.